My name is Sikatweba, born quickly, though you may call me Viola. I was born around June 15, 1878, at the San Carlos Reservation of the Yavapai Territory, one of the four original Arizona territories. The Civil War had just ended 13 years earlier in 1865. As no record keeping was taken on the reservation in those days, I chose my own birth date and year when I applied for United States citizenship. I like to tease my older sister Jawa because her name means enemy. My parents Hugwa, singing cricket in hot weather, and Kaba, Kahavasua, turquoise earned by warrior, would endure great hardship and live to tell about the March of Tears. We Yavapai were often confused with the more aggressive Apache Indians who were associated with the Camp Grant Massacre near Tucson in April 1871. The word Yavapai in our native dialect of the human language sounded much like the English word for Apache. This attention would result in the Yavapai War of 1871 through 1875 and the wrongful deaths of many innocent Yavapai. Our Yavapai people, along with Apaches and others, were forcibly marched to the San Carlos Reservation while the soldiers rode on ponies. We call this deadly journey the March of Tears. Locking shoes, clothing, rest, sufficient food or medicine, and being forced to cross rivers in harsh conditions Many of our children and elderly perished on the journey. Of the 1,500 Yavapai that began the march to San Carlos in 1874, 25 years later, only 200 remained. Even General George Crook, who took military command at Fort Whipple, which is now the VA Hospital, in 1872, did not differentiate in his autobiography that there were two separate, distinct civilizations, Yavapai and Apache. My half-brother and stepfather would later both serve as scouts for General George Crook and fight against the Apache. In 1882, General George Crook would again engage the Yavapai, this time with compassion, and would be integral in restoring peace on the reservation. General Crook ordered the removal of white squatters and miners from the reservation, established trade contract, contracts, and restored rations and supplies that had previously been stolen from the Avapai. As a teenager, I attended the Rice Arizona Indian School and the Phoenix Indian School and immediately utilized cooking and sewing skills to earn income. Later, as chiefess, my wishes to secure an educational facility would be, for the Yavapai would be realized. A land exchange coordinated by my daughter Grace in 1966 is today Yavapai College. It was my vision as I knew that higher education would be key to my people's future. Our tribe withdrew land claims to this land which had been the site of Fort Whipple military base. You can still see the original gates of Fort Whipple near the Yavapai College Performing Arts Center and Sculpture Garden. The college supports the promotion of education within the Yavapai Prescott Indian Tribe and does not charge tuition to its tribal members. In May 1935, the Yavapai were finally designated our own reservation with the aid of several prominent figures. Charlotte Hall, the first woman appointed to an office in the Arizona Territory, Grace Sparks, former Secretary of the Chamber of Commerce, and Arizona Senator Carl Hayden. That same year, my husband, Sam Jamula, would be the first appointed and elected chief of the Avapai tribe. I would have the honor of making acquaintances with the likes of New York City Mayor LaGuardia and presidential candidate, Senator Barry Goldwater. Following the tragic death of my husband in a horse riding accident in 1940, I became the first chiefess of the Yavapai tribe and the first chiefess in Northern America. That year, I also lost my daughter, Amy. These tragedies did not stop me from serving. 
I would lead my people for 26 years and perfect the art of basket weaving, the sale of which enabled financial resources to build our community. The Great Depression would prove to catalyze prosperity among our people. President Franklin Delano Roosevelt created the Civil Works Administration, followed by the Works Progress Administration, which provided aid to build homes and a community room on the reservation. I was called upon to teach basket weaving to many women, and some of my pieces were sent to the Smithsonian Museum in Washington, DC. Our baskets, called Goo Goo, often start with a black center to represent the darkness that existed before the creation of the world. And many baskets depict an alternating white and black figure with a six-pointed star to show strong friendships built between the white man and the Native American. One of my baskets became the official logo which the Avapai tribe uses today. I am so blessed to have been a part of a powerful movement of equality in which many diverse groups came together in a common religion and a common worship. Religious structures had not existed on reservations, and many Indians saw religion as a practice of white man. In 1922, a structure was built for the Yavapai Indian Mission, and I became a Sunday school teacher and elder. In 1959, we broke ground for the Trinity Presbyterian Church, the first Native American church to largely welcome Anglo members. In 1986, I was elected into the Arizona Women's Hall of Fame, where I shared my dream. All we want is equal opportunity and the right to take our place as full-fledged Americans. Succeeding me after my passing in 1966, a hereditary chiefess would continue advising the Tribal Council until the 1990s. My eldest daughter, Grace Mitchell, led the tribe after me and served in the 1960s and 1970s. Following Grace's death, my daughter Lucy served in the 1970s and 1980s. Following Lucy, my granddaughter Patricia McGee served as tribal president for over 20 years, inspiring personal growth and economic development. Her values of honor, integrity, and self-sufficiency would become the values that governed our tribe. She would secure the Articles of Association, which serve as our constitution. This resulted in the establishment of a board of directors. In 1922, Patricia would become the first tribal president to sign the Arizona Tribal State Gaming Compact. This required the state of Arizona to exercise good faith in their control of tribal gaming and was a result of a lawsuit filed against the state of Arizona by the Yavapai tribe. Other Arizona tribes soon followed in the signing of the gaming compact. Today, as a condition of the compact, Arizona tribes contribute a portion of their gaming proceeds to community charities. In 1994, Patricia McGee would champion the Water Rights Settlement Act to secure the tribe's water access, which became public law passed by Congress and signed by President Clinton in 1994. Our late President Ernie Jones and his wife would be instrumental in supporting water rights for the city of Prescott in their early developmental years. Today, our Yavapai Prescott tribe is one of the leading employers in Prescott with our Sundog Industrial Park, Prescott Resort and Conference Center, and Frontier Village Shopping Center. Some ask my secret to strength, happiness, and resilience. Every day, I rise to greet the sun, to invite its calmness to bring me peace. We are, after all, the Avapai Prescott, the people of the sun. <laughs>